Good evening, Jordan family. I am Susan Taylor, principal of Jordan High School, and I am delighted to have the opportunity to present our virtual learning plan for fall 2020. I would like to thank our teachers for their feedback, our JHS reentry team for their creation of the plan, and I would also like to thank the parents and students who participated in our focus group. Hello, Jordan family. This is Assistant Principal James Boyce. During this presentation, Principal Taylor will share information about our core belief, how the JHS virtual learning plan is different than the remote learning plan utilized last spring, and considerations given in developing the JHS virtual learning plan. I will then explain the plan schedule and each of its components. At Jordan High School, we want to ensure that all students have access to a rigorous, diverse, high quality instructional program and robust extracurricular co-curricular engagement to support our belief that all students should graduate on time and with options. Please know that regardless of our learning mode, whether it's virtual or in person, we remain committed to ensuring that all students receive the instruction and support needed to graduate on time and with options. When we first announced that high school students would participate in remote learning, many families had questions about how this experience would be different than the experience in the spring. Well, families, please know there are several differences. All teachers, regardless of department, will use the same learning management system, Canvas. So it doesn't matter if it's an English teacher, helpful living teacher, or CTE teacher, every department, every teacher will use Canvas. This year, we will have three synchronous learning days where students attend class virtually. Last year, whether or not students experienced synchronous learning depended on their teachers. Now, the schedule will include three synchronous learning days where all students are expected to attend class virtually based on the schedule provided. We will teach our students how to use their asynchronous learning days. And students who need an electronic device will be issued a Google Chromebook. Students who need internet access will be issued a hotspot. This year, students will be held accountable through attendance and grading. Parents will be able to see grades in PowerSchool students will be assessed for new learning. We have defined student expectations for synchronous and asynchronous days to help ensure that our students are successful under this virtual model. We include an advisory period, intervention and enrichment opportunities and activities designed to support the social emotional health of our students. And lastly, we have increased the school level support for responding to technology challenges that students may experience. What do we consider in developing our virtual learning plan? First, we read educational literature regarding best practices for remote learning and examined existing models of virtual learning programs in schools. We wanted to make sure that we provided structure for our students as well as flexibility. We absolutely wanted to limit Zoom fatigue. We wanted to ensure that opportunities to address social emotional well being of our students were provided. We needed to be able to move between Plan C, Plan B, Plan A based on the governor's call. We recognize that our virtual plan could not simply replicate a traditional in-person school day. We wanted to build time for period-specific academic support, time to follow up with students who are not engaged, 
We recognize the challenges from the spring 2020 remote learning semester and we wanted to be intentional about addressing those challenges. And we wanted to be sure that we provided a balanced number of instructional face-to-face -face hours for semester courses and AB day courses. The JHS virtual learning schedule was designed with many considerations. One important consideration to note when first looking at the schedule is that the schedule flows smoothly from plan C, all remote learning, to plan B, blended face-to-face -face and remote learning, or to plan A, all face-to-face -face learning. With this in mind, you find the order of the daily classes as well as semester and alternating AB year long classes similar to regular in-person instruction. Additionally, semester and AB year long courses receive the same proportion of instruction to that found in regular in-person instruction. First, let's look at the structure of the schedule. On Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, students will participate in synchronous learning days. This means that students will attend live instruction for four one-hour periods each day. Period one will be from nine to 10, period two from 10.30 to 11.30, period three from one to two, period four from 2.30 to 3.30, with flex periods of 30 minutes built in between each and an hour for lunch from 12 to one. On Wednesday and Friday, also known as Wellness Wednesday and Wellness Friday, students will participate in asynchronous learning days. This means students will have been taught and provided structure for using these days to work more independently. There will not be any time scheduled for whole class direct live instruction on Wednesdays. On Fridays, the day is divided into five periods to offer support for students academically, socially, and emotionally. An advisory and SOAR period will occur from nine to 10. Intervention, enrichment, and office hour periods will be offered from 10 to 11, and from 11 to 12. A club, activity, and office hours period will be offered from 1 to 2.30 and again from 2.30 to 4. Semester classes will meet each Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. For classes on the AB year-long schedule, A and B days will alternate across weeks and holidays, same as during regular in-person instruction. This means that if one week starts with an A day on Monday, Tuesday would be a B day and Thursday an A day. The following week would begin on a B day followed by an A day and another B day. If we were out of school on a Monday, for example, the weekly schedule would remain the same, but the Tuesday would continue with the next day in the A-B alternation determined by the previous Thursday. Now, let's talk about what each of the components of the schedule will mean. First, Let's address the synchronous learning time occurring in one hour periods on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 9, 10, 30, 1, and 2, 30. Synchronous learning will be virtual online learning occurring in real time with the teacher. This will occur through video conferencing using tools such as Zoom, Google Meet, and others. Examples of synchronous learning can include direct instruction with video, whole group practice with examples, small group practice with breakout rooms, individual practice with chat and visual check-in, etc. Next, let's look at the 30 minute flex time between each synchronous period. Flex time is student driven and can be used for several purposes. Teachers can offer instructional support for students in small groups or for individuals but it is not a time for whole class direct instruction. This is also a time that students, teachers, and parents can schedule conferences, counselors can meet with students, and it can simply be a break for students between classes that can allow time for finishing assignments or completing work for another class. Person-to-person -person contact during flex time can include, but is not limited to, video conferencing, emailing, phone calls, and other, like apps such as Remind. Examples of using flex time include opportunities for small group and independent work, additional practice and skill development, additional time for completing assignments, and time to meet with the teacher or counselor. Next, let's look at Wellness Wednesday. Wellness Wednesday is an asynchronous learning day. 
This means that it is independent work time for students. Wellness Wednesday is also for student services programming so that counselors have an opportunity to work with students on social and emotional needs, as well as college preparedness. Additionally, Wednesday will be a time when students will need to complete their question of the day for attendance purposes. Any meetings associated with Wellness Wednesday may be done by video conferencing. Students may also view pre-recorded video from their teachers in an effort to complete assignments. Examples of Wellness Wednesday activities include completing class assignments, projects, independent practice, and other, or participating in counselor corner activities and guidance lessons. Now let's look at Wellness Friday, beginning with the advisory and SOAR period from 9 to 10. This time is a time to complete advisory activities, participate in SOAR sessions, and to have independent learning time. Students will also complete an assigned question of the day for attendance during this time on Fridays. Students will participate in the advisory and SOAR period via video conferencing with your advisory teacher. Some examples of activities that may take place during the advisory and SOAR session period include community building circles, four-year planning, goal setting, college advising, and more. Following the advisory and SOAR session block on Wellness Friday are two one-hour blocks for intervention, enrichment, and teacher office hours. This is a time for students to participate in scheduled interventions and enrichment, small group instruction, teacher office hours, or teacher parent student conferences. Students would do this by appointment with the teacher via video conferencing, phone calls, email, or other. Examples include relearning skills or concepts, additional practice, review and correcting tests, extension activities, and more. Please note that the plan includes scheduling intervention and enrichment by academic departments to avoid prominent conflicts between subjects that often necessitate additional support. From 10 to 11, the e-learning department, helpful living, math, social studies, and world languages would provide intervention and enrichment. And from 11 to 12, arts, career and technical education, English, English as a second language, and science departments would provide intervention and enrichment. Exceptional students would fall into the respective content for which they need support. In the afternoon on Wellness Friday, students will have the opportunity to meet with their teachers during scheduled office hours and participate in clubs and activities. Clubs and activities may include any extra or co-curricular activities. Meetings will occur via video conferences, and examples of these activities include marching band, Black Student Union, National Honor Society, Student Government Association, Future Farmers of America, International Club, and many others. Finally, let's take a look at the first 10 days of school schedule. The only difference in this schedule includes the addition of a 30-minute advisory on Monday through Thursday. It is not necessary for Friday as an hour-long advisory period already exists. Therefore, the Friday schedule remains the same and the rest of the schedule for Monday through Thursday is simply condensed to provide the same number of synchronous and flex periods and conclude the day by 4 p.m. The daily advisory period at the start of the school year is critical to helping students learn the expectations for the virtual learning plan as well as how to navigate their schedule and manage their coursework. It is also critical for meeting district and state requirements for collecting our average daily membership, which is tied to obtaining our resources for the 2020-21 school year. We are excited about the opportunity to continue to serve our students, and we are looking forward to what our virtual learning program will offer. For further updates, please follow Jordan's social media sites, Twitter at JHS Falcons and Instagram at CE Jordan Falcons. Families are also encouraged to check our website for updates. Thank you for your attention. I wanna, I wanna give it, I wanna...